que gravitational pull a truly monumentous day for people any way you put it comedy carnage and a whole lot of guns that's the status quo for borderlands and the pre-sequel delivers on all fronts it may look and feel like a borderlands title but is it worth the 60 dollars asking price this is our review of borderlands the pre-sequel integration commencing User authorized. Have a nice day. I'm dying. I'm dying. Uh, poor robot. Pre-sequel is set on Altus, a moon of Pandora that is orbited by the Hyperion station Helios. Early in the game, Handsome Jack and his henchmen, the four playable vault hunters, are ousted from Helios and forced with the task of retaking it before the Lost Legion destroys Elpis. He's targeting the moon's core. Try not to panic, but uh, she's trying to blow up Alpis. This is all told in retrospect by Athena, one of the four protagonists, and the addition of commentary from popular Borderlands mainstays is a nice touch. Looking for me, sugar? The Vault Hunters are as varied as you'd expect from the series, with powers ranging from a shield that absorbs enemy attacks to summoning AI helper drones. Claptrap's power stands above the rest as he is able to analyze the battlefield and select the power most suited to the situation, even other Vault Hunter's powers. The characters are all interesting, but only Athena really gains development. Even Handsome Jack, which the game touts as being a morally ambiguous villain, is little more than his usual psychotic self. Although that aspect might be appealing to some, it isn't for others. That dumbass died! Are you kidding me? I swear to God, if I ever become CEO, I'm going to destroy every last one of those friggin' things. Damn right. The gameplay is standard Borderlands fare with a few shakeups. Since Elpis isn't an oxygenated planet, you must rely on your O2 kit and oxygen vents to keep breathing, or risk death by suffocation. There's also a new type of weapon, the laser, and a new element called Cryo. While the laser is fairly straightforward, Cryo is a nice addition, allowing you to freeze your enemies and shatter them. There's even a grinder, a new shop that lets you combine three guns of the same rarity to make a gun of equal or greater rarity. The grinder stands out as a method of making trash loot meaningful, as all those commons you've collected may soon build up to one of your best guns. Loonshine achieved! The graphics are good, but not much has been done to overhaul them into a next-gen visual game. The cell-shaded aesthetic is nice, but the textures are definitely lacking. It would have been nice to see Gearbox include some high-res textures for those of us with VRAM to spare, but the game still looks as nice as you'd want a Borderlands game to look. These additions are nice, but ultimately the pre-sequel is a standard Borderlands game. You'll shoot waves of the same enemies over and over, work your way up to the objective, complete it, and get some nice gun loot. The pre-sequel's greatest sin might also be its greatest strength. Much of what made Borderlands 2 great is here, but it feels so similar that one has to wonder whether this could have just been a DLC expansion instead of a full standalone game. But we'll likely have to wait until the eventual Borderlands 3 to see any major overhauls. Regardless, it's still a fun, explosive shooter that's great for lone wolf loot hunters or co-op game nights. Just don't expect too much. We give Borderlands, the pre-sequel, a 75. Oh, you found the photo. Cool. Yeah, if I come home without that, my son would have thrown his feces on the wall. <laughs> you know, you know how 19-year-olds are. Anyway.